Hey, how are y'all doing today? Uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, 300 Whisper Brass. Um, I've done a little checking uh, on the web, and all I'm seeing is uh, 300 Blackout, how to make it. And uh, so I want to show you guys a couple things. Uh, this is something we did about uh, probably five years ago. We, uh, my buddy Ron and I got a uh, 300 Blackout, or th I'm sorry, 300 Whisper uh, when they first came out. And... Uh, it wasn't that popular, so there wasn't a lot of brass out there. There was only one, I think it was Cordobon, was the only one that could make it, uh, or the only one that did make it, so uh, we decided to figure out how to make our own. Um, we actually had to do a little uh, manufacturing <laughs> uh, on things, and uh, anyway, since then, there's been a lot of uh, videos on 300 Blackout, how to make those, uh, but, you know, really, 300 Blackout, 300 Whisper, the same thing. Uh, yeah, there's supposed to be a small difference in the caliber or, or in the uh, shell uh, case themselves. Um, but you know what? I've shot 300 blackout on my 300 whisper. My buddy uh, shoots 300 whisper out of his 300 blackout, so they're pretty much the same thing. What I've got here is a uh, 300 uh, whisper die, and um, then over there on my Dillon uh, 650, I've got a 300 whisper, uh, the whole loading uh, kit, as well as one right over here for my. Uh, other little things I want to do without the Dillon. So um, anyway, I do everything on 300 Whisper platform, whether it's going to be a 300 Blackout or a 300 Whisper. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is show you a couple ways that we've made the brass. First thing is obviously you've seen uh, a 223 round, and uh, what we do is I usually take a bandsaw. I'm doing these in bulk. I just made uh, 2,000 the other night for a friend of mine, and so I took a bandsaw. I just cut off right there at the neck. And um, then I went back with the grinder. Uh, this is a grinder we made about five years ago, and I've seen some other ones since. But uh, we take the grinder and uh, go ahead and, and size it correctly for the 300 Whisper or 300 Blackout, whichever one you want to use. Now, what we've done, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. If you're just doing a few, if you don't do a whole bunch. Um, you can actually put the entire 223 round in this grinder. I'll show you here in just a second how I do this, but. Um, when I'm making a whole bunch, I don't want to do that just because I'm not sure how long this uh, this uh, diamond uh, grinder will last. So uh, I don't want to have to worry about sharpening later. So I usually cut, go ahead and cut the necks off. Uh, it saves a little bit of time. And um, with this thing, just to show you there, when you get it, you can also get the, the neck. And I usually use this, but for this purpose, I'm going to leave it off so I can show you how this works. But what this does, it clamps right here around, and I hook my shop back up to it, which gets rid of all the grindings. Um, there are qu quite a few grindings, that uh, shavings that, that fly off um, in a number of places, and uh, pretty much clear across the room. So you will, uh, you'll have a lot of mess if you do it without this uh, shop back attachment. So anyway, let me uh, go ahead and close for a second and set some things up, and we'll get to uh, do a little grinding. All right, so as you can see, uh, you might be able to see on the video here that I've got a uh, little GoPro camera. I'm going to use that to show different angles. But uh, what we'll do is we'll do a couple different ones. So here's one that I cut the, the cut the neck off, and here's a full one. And uh, it's going to get a little loud. I apologize for the noise. This is Texas, and uh, right now it's 99 degrees in my storage building because I left the uh, air conditioner off uh, all day. So uh, it's going to take a while to get get back. But uh, let's go ahead and turn this on, get ready for some noise, and I'll show you the, the grinding process. You can see what I did just now. Still a little fuzzy. I'll, what I'll need to do is take a well. I don't know where it is. Hold on. There we go. Once I do that, I'll need to take this and just kind of trim it up a little bit. Now it's ready to go. So I got a great piece of brass to use. Let's go ahead and do it with a. Let's go ahead and do it here with a full. 223 shell. Just kind of show you how fast it is. Now, once again, let me turn this off. All right. Now, once again, what this does, this this process here, this actually will resize it and grind it. So this motor right here is going to do both of those things for me. I do run them back through because these are not uh, deprimed, so I will run it through a deprimer and uh, resizer. 
just to uh, make sure that everything's good. But um, anyway, you get the idea. So it, it pretty much sets it to standard. That it, we uh, we do have it set already to the length, and I don't remember what that length is offhand, but we can look that up. Um, so when I finish grinding these, it's going to be exact size that it needs to be for a 300 whisper or a 300 blackout. So here we go. Got it set. And I'm simply just going to pull it up. See all the junk flying off of there, and. Here we go. Got a 300 whisper brass, R300 blackout. After this, I'll take a. Uh, usually, the, for me, I'm using subsonic rounds. So I'll put a 220 grain bullet on top. I use a uh, combination of either H110 at 9.2 grains with a 220 grain round, or I'll use a 1680 with 10.2 ground uh, grains, and uh, that's going to give me right around 1,050 feet per second for uh, subsonic. Now when I'm shooting a uh, uh, sonic round, I usually use a, uh, about a 147 grain bullet, but uh, that's a different, whole different episode. So anyway, I just want to show you real quick how to do that. I mean, it's very simple. Um, I've made, just the other night, ah, just in a couple hours, I made all these. So you can tell that's uh, about 2,000 plus another bag down there. All ready to go, all I have to do is uh, at this point is be loaded and uh, they're ready to go so uh, anyway I hope that's been informative for you and uh, something you can do is it's not that expensive to get one of these motors these motors do last a long time uh, once you get them just set them to the right height get that height set and then boom you're in, in business just rocking and rolling so uh, hopefully that helps you guys y'all have a good day thank you